also learn is that a brand is not a logo. Right? A brand is a person's gut feeling about a product or the service of a company. What I love is when they say, a brand is not what you say it is, it is what the customers say it is. So your reputation is not what you think you are, it's what they say you are. So if anything you must remember about branding, forget all what they say in textbook, is remember that whatever they say about you, that's who you are because that is what you are projecting to the world. Your job is to define and to behave in a way that elicits the type of impact that you want to have in the world. So your brand is what they say you are, not what you think you are. What's important is that a brand is a promise made and a promise delivered. Because a whole lot of us go out into the world and we make big promises a better life for all. <laughs> That's what we do. Just do it. You must deliver on it. Because if you don't deliver on it, your brain is a fraud. Your job is to understand that all that a brain is, is a promise made and a promise delivered. How beautiful is this? Two definitions which are to the point. It's not what you say it is, it's what they say it is. And what it is, is a promise made and a promise delivered. Your brand is a promise made and a promise delivered. I want to take you know, just three examples, so uh, three slides already, what makes for a great brand. The good thing about great brands, the first thing is that they are focused. I mean, how many people here are, how many people in here have got a Volvo? <coughs> <laughs> Have you noticed there's always like one or two people with no taste? <laughs> We've identified two here. Those people who don't know them want to meet them, there's one right here and there's one right there. You know, Volvo is one of those cars. Volvo, by the way, is one of those cars. If you own one, nobody feels like a lawyer. <laughs> nobody feels like, you know, we need to plan and get a tender and get a Volvo as well. I've never come across anybody who wants to get a tender to get a, a Volvo. Ever. My people understand cars. They start at a one series when they get their first job. Then they move to their three series when they become managers. And when you promote my people and you make them executives, they move to a five series. But then you know my people are very impatient. Because when they get to a five series and they are now executives, they now all want to become entrepreneurs and start their businesses. And then they go get themselves a big tender. And when my people get a tender, what does BMW deliver to them? Seven series. <laughs> BMW is about the only car that understands how to grow with my people. <laughs> How many people know this brand? <coughs> you, my people are brand wise. <laughs> no, my people are very brand wise. Uh, so, by, who knows this brand? I just want to see hands again. What does he do, sir, this brand? Shoes. Yes, of course. Shoes. <laughs> oh, sorry. I misunderstood you. Why did you say that to you? I think I miss, there's a bit of a disconnect there. <laughs> now, great brands are very clear what they do. They are focused on what they do. They don't go from one thing to the other. So now you see how we get confused. What business is Puma in now? Because I thought Puma is Usain Bolt. Now I see you saying the reason he's running so fast is because something's got a host behind him. That's why he's running so fast. Something is propelling you say. It's called energy. Great brands are also, they change over time. So you want to be different, you want to be distinctive, you want to be a self, you want to be consistent, you want to be responsible, you want to be a brand. Because nobody runs the show better than you. You are the chief executive of you incorporated. We are all businesses. Some businesses are called entrepreneurship, some businesses are called jobs, some businesses are called polo offer. That's also a business, folks. We are all in business. So you need to understand 
what your brand is. Because they say if you can't, because you know people say to you, hey, but the problem is that I'm not as talented as you. We are all talented. But if you feel that your talent is not going to put you forward, then you must put in a bit of effort. So let's run seven things that are going to change you. So we're going to go through what I think is, we are going to do a proper change management this weekend with you. So I'm not going to be making you walk on fire. I'm not going to make you walk on bungee jump because I'm not going to make you I'm going to make a much more systematic way in which you're going to walk this business. So when you live here, Monday, people should begin to see that this person has changed. So the first thing you need to do is to, uh, I'm going to make it easy, I'm going to call the seven C's. So the first thing I'm going to call it context. Now context, folks, you know, Jesus says, your brand is what people say about you when you leave the room. So context is to find out what is it that they say about me around you. What is home causing on in this town? There is nothing more important in life than home goes. Because because of home goes, okay, sorry, in sorry for the professionals among us, uh, it's called research. Uh, <laughs> but I just you know, people are the professionals here. There are people like me, and then there are professionals. So for the professionals around us, it's called research. Because when Coca-Cola goes around with a little, little board and asking people, how do you like the taste? Love it. How do you like uh, the, like the pet? Love it. And they go, seven out of ten people think Coke, you are great. Nobody does it on themselves. But the best way to do it on yourself is to listen in. Google yourself. Find out what is it they are saying about you. But I'm going to give you a much better example, a much better uh, uh, tactic on how to strategy on how to do this. Who's going to sell for in the room? Everybody's going to sell for Who is ever in meetings or sitting with friends or in a group? All of us at one stage, we do that, right? Folks, next time you are sitting in your, with your group of friends or you are sitting in a meeting, put the phone on the record and pretend to go to the toilet and leave the phone behind. <laughs> <laughs> and just say, this guy just excuse myself. Just uh, get out. <laughs> Kiri, you will not even have one foot out. <laughs> they will start. <laughs> they like, oh, I'm such a drag, David. <laughs> is such a problem. Because you know, it's the very same people when you come to the like, oh, you couldn't wait when I'm just get going again. <laughs> about you and you are recording it then afterwards folks when you get home and you're watching TV you press record a uh, play and you listen to what they say because your brand is what they say about you and not what you say about yourself your job your job is not to go fight them your job is to go thank them because they've shown you the distance between what you think about yourself and what they are decoding from you. Your job is to design your brand so that that distance is zero. So that what they think about you and what you think about yourself should be aligned. And part of aligning your brand is to create what we call clarity. Folks, the second C clarity, and you know clarity because in the township, they say, when you say, I am going to see John Tiban, the people will say, hey, you do me, man? No John Tiban. <laughs> Folks, my people have always understood branding. Because you do me, man? is called in marketing terms positioning. <laughs> so you must clarify your positioning. You must go around and find out what they think about you in the research, and then come back and clarify what you want to be famous for. And fame is not about being celebrity. Fame could be even to yourself and to your friends. Anybody here uh, know the Edgars? I know, I know some of us are very rich, and we don't go to Edgars. <laughs> Anybody here knows Edgars like the rest of us who grew up in townships? Where are my township people? We all know sales house, we all know jet. Now I grew up in a township like all of you, okay, some of you are in denial, but it's a different subject. 
These are all the egg corn brands. And imagine when I finished varsity and I saw this ad, it says, don't work for us. I don't know how you feel if you see an ad from a company saying, don't work for us. I was offended. I said, what kind of a company is this that says I must not apply for a job when I need it? Do they know we are at 30% unemployment? These people. Do they know how educated I am even though I, I haven't learned anything? <laughs> then I said, I need to read this ad properly. And the ad says, if people, integrity, performance, and professionalism are important to you, you'll fit right in. Do you know what they say about us black folks? If you want to hide anything, put it in writing. I dealt with this writing business. I went there and I found out in here, they are saying, if your brand is aligned with my brand, you must apply. Because there's always a vacancy for people who think like us, who are as ambitious as us, who work as we do, who have the same value set as we do. Folks, there is no unemployment. There is just a lot of misaligned people in this country. They don't have the right education, so they can't do the jobs which are available. They don't have the right attitude, so they can't work for the companies where they've got jobs. If we can align the company, I mean, what kind of a country is it where 30% is a pass rate? I mean, some of us who did Arithmetic 101, we know 30% is fail in any language. <laughs> Your check one says, your job as a leader is to create a vision, articulate it passionately, own it, and relentlessly pursue it. Your job is to clarify what is it I want for me. How do I want people to think of me and to pursue that vision? It must consume you. Don't worry about what people are going to say around you because they are going to talk. You want them to talk, by the way. You want that gossip because you want to make sure that they are talking about you. But you must remember only one thing. Your brand is what they say about you and not what you say. Your brand is what they say when you leave this room. So clarity is about ensuring that your brand speaks <laughs> your language. So people say, ah, oh, you know Donald Trump is such a racist. Donald Trump is not a racist. Just doesn't like Mexicans. <laughs> Folks, there's nothing wrong with that. I think it's, uh, I think it's, um, um, uh, I forget the, the, um, the, the Islam guy who came to South Africa and also said that too. They said to him, Reverend, um, I forget his name now. And they said to him, you are such a racist. You are promoting, a, you are saying that black people need to be with black people. We find that abhorrent here in the Republic of South Africa. Our constitution says you must love everybody. And he said, Jenny, if loving my people makes me a racist, then I'm happy to be a racist. Donald loves his country. He's got a vision for his country. He told us before he became president. He is just delivering on his brand. Because folks, a brand is a promise made and a promise delivered. Clarity. It's about having a competitive understanding and having a competitive advantage. Because if you don't have a competitive advantage, you can't compete, you are going to remain unemployed. You are going to remain in the position you are at work. You are going to remain in the position you are in society because you have no competitive advantage. You cannot compete. Your job is to create a competitive advantage. You find out what makes you distinctive. So that when people are always allowed about to go to Ujumenga and the hotel, people should be able to say it with clarity, whatever they say. Because leadership branding is about knowing what you stand for. So you need to know what you stand for. As I say, Mandela is a complete sentence. No questions asked. When you say Mandela, I've yet to see black people or anybody who will party Mandela, Mandela, Mandela. <laughs> Nobody does that, right? We just say Mandela. That's a complete sentence for Helen. That's it. Everybody is clear who he is. We need to make sure you're a complete sentence yourself. When they mention your name, it must be clear. 
And then Jennifer says, you don't want to be the very best of the best. You want to be the only one who do what you do. That is competitive advantage. You know, uh, Harvard professor Michael Porter put it so beautifully. He says, competitive advantage is not about being better than anybody else. It's about being different from everybody else. Your job is not to try and outdo me because you will fail. <laughs> because nobody runs the show better than me. Your job is to run your show different from mine. That is competitive advantage. <laughs> the third thing, folks, is what we call competence. Because you know, I love because you know I know one or two celebrities, so they always call me Tender Boba Brenda. so you know sometimes when you look at them and you say, uh, what are we branding? <laughs> No, 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 I want to be famous. I want to be on the covers. But what are we working with? Can you give me, give me something to work with? I need something to work with. Because folks, you need to have something that you are selling, right? You can't just be, I mean, even Kim, even Kim Kardashian knows what she's selling, right? She's put it on videos. Competence is understanding what Henry Ford says. They don't chase money, folks. Money is a consequence of your passions, of your job, of your effort. You can't start the business by saying, I want to be rich. What kind of a business is that? You must start a business by saying, I want to solve problems. Those problems, when you solve them better than anybody else, different from anybody else, will make you money. What you want to pursue is knowledge, experience, and uh, ability. Because money, folks, doesn't come to everybody. Money comes to those who have earned it. Management, you know, we talk about management as leadership. It's about doing the, uh, uh, things right, but leadership is about doing the right thing. Find out what is it that you want to do right. The fourth C is cover. You know, folks, my people like to say, <laughs> You can't judge a book by its cover. <laughs> How many people do we know here who've got 100 degrees and if they walk in here and are smelling and they're dressed in an overall, nobody sees a degree? You need to package that degree. You need to dress it up. Because folks, what you dress tells the story of who I should expect. Not necessarily who it is. As you walk in for an interview, they're looking at you. Then like, there comes the next chief executive, or there comes the next garden boy. <laughs> Doesn't matter what the interview is about, as you come in, they can tell exactly who you are going to be. Do you know there's another oak who's been doing scuba diving there in uh, some small islands? Before he used to hang out in Kenya, smoking dope, like all of us. Smoking daha, playing around, children, dressed in three quarter pants which don't fit, some of them are below the number. Uh, you know how we are when we like, you know, when we have no ambitions. And we met some chick called Michelle. And then Michelle and said to this chick says, I wanna run the biggest show in this world called the US of A. And Michelle says, please, nigga, please. <laughs> Can we just work on this first? <laughs> We know how that show ended. <laughs> CNN spent, CNN spent a whole hour discussing his black suit. Then uh, they had to, I remember they had Amani, they had Versace, they, because you know how CNN can repeat the same thing. They had all of them around the table. So let's just talk about how he looks. Isn't he presidential? And everybody says, oh, that black suit just works well. Have you seen the brother swag when he walks? Do you, do, you, do you remember 2008, those were born, uh, how they went through this discussing how Barack Obama presented himself. And they said, this man is the president of the United States of America. My well, folks, this is what the is all about. Jack Nicholson, without glasses, I'm Jack Nicholson. I'm Jack Nicholson. Without them, I'm just fat at 16. So you just understand what you're saying, I had coffee, <laughs> so, 
the two people in the room are on stick Instagram and, and the one that follows me uh, would have seen this picture I posted of Spook. We're in a, we had dinner uh, with just a few, some dinner to learn something. There's just guys. And Spook came in with a three piece shiny bow tie and glasses. He wore them the entire night. <laughs> to punch the plate for Boo to eat. Just to bring light in. Because Boo had to stick to his look. What's his look? That's my brother's look. You need to understand what your look is. How you gonna distinguish yourself? And you need to suffer through it. Ask women, have you seen women in the Louboutin too? When they walk, that they like you need to wear them. Otherwise you have not arrived. Yeah. Even if you feel you want to to suffer through this pain if you want to be a lady. Because when people judge you, 55% of their judgment is based on the visual. And folks, only 7% on your content. We love your content. We think you must be competent. But we judge you when you walk in, we make our first impression based on how you look. Five. Out of the fifth C is community. You need to understand who's around you. So you build your community, folks. I'm not talking about CSI. Because I'm so people are still I'm so some people are saying, you are looking at a CSI project. No. Who is your community? Who are who are your peeps? What you who are your folks around you? That's why the first important question you need to ask yourself is who is in my network? Because I say birds of a feather flock together. So some of us don't get promoted, not because we're not good, but because we're hanging out with them. <laughs> Bringing us down. <laughs> so you need to understand who is in my network. Just do it, just do it. When, when you live here, just do a, a serving and a first stuff. Just write a list who is in my network. You're just listing. Can I then tell the Tawa? It's my time. The my time. It's my point. No, that I'm And I've got Mang Mang. You're a millionaire. And I've got over to you, Alex. And then you go put the whole list. Put, put down the list of your folks. Then you go to the next list, folks. And then say, you are not need to start editing. <laughs> Who needs to be here because nothing is shorter? <laughs> I want to become a tenderpreneur, but I don't have a tender, so I don't have a minister or a politician. <laughs> so I need to recruit a politician. So I want to become a tenderpreneur. I can't, because people are going to help me. I need to get this now. I need to get myself a mama action or something. Anything, anything that's going to, anything. Yes, I'm saying a mama is going to give me some action. <laughs> You're just lighting up your phone. And the third most important thing you need to do, folks, you need to fire. You need to fire. You need to sit with that list of yours, and then you need to say, Hi, vision, you have man. We need to exit you. I know it's difficult <laughs> to exit people, but you need to start exiting people. You need to say, out. Because you know that, like, you know people, we understand how to Because, because uh, anybody here goes to funerals, I mean black people, <laughs> we do funerals. I know, I know some of us are going to say, but who goes to funerals here? <laughs> what happens at, 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 a, at a funeral when Malulu Willa comes out? <laughs> but you come take it, you have lippy job, you look at it. Malulu must not come in the middle. We don't want people to know we've got such folks in our family. Our family is perfect. Because you know, that's what we do. They say, folks, exit them out of my network. Because I need to present a picture of success. That's what I'm saying that branding comes naturally to us black people. We've been branding ourselves all our lives. Because, folks, your network is your net worth. So the people who surround you determine or signal who you are. Birds of a feather flock together. The next thing is you got to communicate. Because you can't now say, I got my degrees, I got my education, I got my business, I got this thing, I got my sorted, this thing here, and then sit in your corner. How do you expect us to find you? 
You need to communicate. Because in times past you could be obscure and secure, but now you cannot. You need to get out there. How about advertising? You need to advertise, folks. You need to advertise in the marketing budget. Do you guys have marketing budget for yourselves? You need to have a marketing budget for yourself. You need to have a marketing budget. And I think we must advertise. They say, no, when it comes to advertising, half is wasted. I just don't know which half. How about social media? It's easy to get free of charge. Free of charge. I love social media. Because in social media, everybody can join social media. Because when I read your tweets, I can tell what kind of people you hang with, I can tell what company you work for, and whatever you say, I also give them credit. So we saw the tweet from Penny, we're like, yo, Java is such a racist company. We saw the tweet, we're like, yo, white people are racist. Because folks, whatever you sign off, you are endorsing, you are also taking everybody with who's associated with you. So don't waste those 140 characters and that nonsense like my tweets are not a retweet. Uh, my tweets are personal. No, they're not personal. They are public. <laughs> and your people are exactly like you. That's who you hang with. <laughs> a brand is everything. You do a bit of advertising, a bit of social media, a bit of networking, a bit of having fun. Seventh, to close, congruence. Everything has to work together. Everything, you have to bring it all together. Do you know what you do at work, what you do at home, what you do at play? Please don't manage three brains. There's only one of you. You have to be the same person at work. Two people say, so I am saying, I'm a different person. No, you're not a different person. You need to be in a, at, at, uh, at that place, uh, SC debate or somewhere. Something is wrong with you. You need a psychologist to consult to you. There's a problem. If you're, if you're different at home from at work in that place, you have a problem. Because the things, if you, there, there can be no happiness if the things that you believe in are different from the things that you do. You have to be one person everywhere else. When you see Apple, you think Steve Jobs. When you see Steve Jobs, you think Apple. There's an alignment there. People don't say, when I see Apple, you know, I'm thinking of Adam and Eva. <laughs> or if. I'm also thinking about, uh, uh, about the farmer's market, whatever it is. When you see Apple, you think. When you see Tiger, you think, yo, how did you hide 10 girlfriends <laughs> at the same time while becoming such a superstar? Sorry, Tiger. The companies which were associated with Cover Tiger Woods, not the company that he kept. The company that were associated with his back pocket, that sponsored him, lost 
12 billion the first week that Tiger revealed. And Tiger has never been the same. Have you noticed, since they caught on Tiger Woods, all of a sudden he's got back problems. Because <laughs> the thing is problematic, folks. Because if your head is not right, even your back is problematic. Your cons all of a sudden are a problem. You, you know, everything starts not working. Since Tiger Woods was found out, he's had so many problems. Look at the head today, I can't play. I don't know whether we tell them that slowly or Puma in public or if there's other things. But we know one thing, folks, your friend must be consistent. Don't tell us, Tiger, that you are perfect. A wife and two kids, you raised by a beautiful family. Bandi Eko Nene, you are busy. You've got small houses in every town. Yo, Tiger would have run out of property at the beginning in South Africa because we only have nine provinces. So, you know, and he had like 12 girlfriends because he didn't have a girlfriend in every province for all the provincial tournaments. So, there didn't have a problem for Tiger. I was going to Pretoria yesterday. I wanted to stop by Mampuri, just say hello, boss. I felt it was too much uh, for the day. Because the last time I saw Oscar, last time I actually physically saw Oscar, we were judging the South Africa together. And I was like, wow, that's the same guy who everybody was running to get a signature because you know, all of us have to stand in the back so that, so that Oscar can come and get a signature. <laughs> <laughs> Your brand must be aligned. What you think, what you touch, and what you feel must be together. They must be congruent. You must be the same person at home, at work, and at play. Because folks, it takes 20 years to build a reputation, but just five seconds to destroy it. Mm. I think with Fabi, maybe number one or two. <laughs> so there's lunch hour and people will come to you. <laughs> do you know when they asked Muhammad Ali, how do you want us to remember you? And he went through the list. And he said, I wouldn't mind if they remember what a pretty guy I was as well. All our lives. He says, my boxing was beautiful. My life was beautiful. People knew I was a Muslim. People knew I took three years. I spent time in jail. I took three years because I believed in what I believed. He says, I didn't want to go out there and call myself Muhammad Ali. I didn't want to go out there and talk about Islam. I didn't want to go out there and talk about living a good life and live in a country which does not do the things I believe in. I want to be the same guy. I was going to sacrifice my boxing if it was taken away from who I am. And they asked Mandela, how do you want us to remember you? He says, I want him to say, here lies a man who's done good for his people and his country. No argument. Do you know, I love, I love what Emma Bromack says. He says, on my last day on earth, I want to stand before God. I hope I would have no time left and say to him, I have 